What's up? I'm Vin, and today I want to show how to estimate limits from a table. So for this first question here, we're going to use the table of values below to estimate the value of the limit as x approaches 1 of x to the third minus 1 over x minus 1. So on this calculator, we'll go over to the y equals and we'll type in the function. I'm going to press alpha y equals enter to pull up a blank fraction. And then I'm writing x to the third. And then I'm going to get out of the exponent. And we have minus 1. And we're dividing this by x minus 1. But the problem with the calculator right now is if we go to the table by pressing second graph, notice that we have all of these whole number values for x, but we want these decimal values. So a nice thing that we could do here is we're going to press second window and we're going to switch the table over here from the independent section from auto to ask. And what that's going to do is it's going to turn the independent variable into something that we're just going to be able to type in. So I could just type in custom values now. I could write 0.9 and it's going to give me my corresponding y value. Now, right now it's coming up in fraction form, so I'm gonna go over to mode, and I'm gonna switch the answers over from auto to decimal, because for these questions, we'll round to the nearest three decimal places or four decimal places if it's appropriate. So now the next value we care about is 0 0.99. So I'm gonna go over to the next entry here, and I'm gonna write 0 0.99 and press enter, and this is the corresponding y value. And I'll do this for the rest of the values here. We have 0 0.39s like this, and we press enter and then we've got 1.001 .001. we've got 1.01 .01, and we've also got 1.1 so just pressing all these values in here and now let's drag this back to the main screen so now let's just transfer these y values over to the table so now that we've got the table filled out the question is asking for the limit as x approaches one and notice that one is between these two values here in the x row so you want to check the left side first and look at what happens as x gets closer to 1 from the left side. The y values here are getting closer and closer to 3. Just know when you're looking for a limit, you're ultimately looking for a y value here. So the y values are getting closer to 3. But you also have to make sure that you check the right side. So as we get closer to 1 from the right side, notice here that our y values are shrinking, but they're getting closer and closer to 3. So the fact that our left side and right side limit is giving us three, that tells us that our estimate here for the limit as x approaches one of our function is going to be equal to three. Now, one more thing before we move on, just know that we could divide these polynomials and it would give us x squared plus x plus one, and then we could find the limit as x approaches one of x squared plus x plus one. And we could evaluate this limit by substitution. We just plug in here and we're gonna have one squared plus one plus one, which would simplify to three. And that matches the limit we found by estimating with the table. Question two, we're going to use the table of values below to estimate the value of the limit as x approaches 2 of x minus 2 over natural log of absolute value x minus 2. So let's switch back to the y equals here, and we're going to clear this out, and now we have a new fraction. We have alpha y equals enter, and in the numerator, we're going to have x minus 2, and then down in the denominator here, we're going to have natural log of absolute value. We're going to press math, go over to the right, and press enter on abs for absolute value, and we're going to have x minus 2 here. And now I'm just going to get out of this and I'm going to close the parentheses here. And if we want, we could just press graph here just to see what this thing looks like. And notice that we're finding the limit as x approaches 2. So we have something nice in this portion of the graph. But if we want to use the table here, we're going to press second graph and we're going to type in these values here. Now, one thing before we move on, notice over here in the y column that we have this expression 1.4e negative 4. And if you're not used to this notation, this just means 1.4 times 10 to the negative 4. And if you scroll up to the decimal itself, it's going to give you more digits that you could use. And this will work for any of the numbers here. If I go over to this y value, notice that I get more decimals in case I want to look at more values. Now, before I write these y values in the table, I just want to explore this one a little bit more, the 1.4 times 10 to the negative 4. So remember this, I could just change to times 10 to the negative fourth power. And then what I could do is I could write out this decimal. So we have 1.44, 7.64, and then 8.2. So I'll just stop here at 8. And I'm going to put a few zeros in front like this. I'm going to put a bunch of zeros. And we're multiplying this decimal by 10 to the negative fourth. So I'm going to move the decimal one, two, three, four spaces to the left. And then this is just going to help me that I could write an accurate decimal in the table.
One thing that jumps out at me right away is that if we look in the neighborhood here of x equals 2, notice that the y values are equal and opposite on either side of x equals 2. And that has to do with if we look at the graph here in the neighborhood of x equals 2, the portion of the graph that's between x equals 1 and x equals 3 has point symmetry over the point 2, 0. So that explains why we have these equal and opposite y values. But remember, we're taking the limit as x approaches 2. So if we approach x equals 2 from the left side, notice we're going from 1.9 to 1.99 to 1.999. The y values here are getting smaller. They are shrinking to 0. And then if we were to approach 2 from the right side, moving from right to left, notice that when x gets closer to 2 from this side, the y values are getting closer to 0. So our limit here, if we estimate this from the table, is equal to 0. And we could also just look at the graph here. Notice that when we come in from the left side that we're heading towards the point 2, 0. And when we're coming in from the right side towards x equals 2, we're heading to the point 2, 0. So our limit checks out. Question three, we're going to use a table of values to estimate the value of the limit as x approaches negative three of this function here. So notice right away that they didn't give us any x values to start with. So we're going to have to come up with the x values ourselves. So let's think about the number line. So I'm imagining the number line here. And I'm imagining the number line in the neighborhood of negative three. So this is the number line that I'm thinking of. And we're in the neighborhood of negative three. And the first integer to the left of negative three would be negative four. And the first integer to the right of negative three would be negative two. So that'll help us find the appropriate decimals here. So the first decimal I'm thinking of in this neighborhood to the left is negative 3.1. And then the next one I'm thinking of that would get us closer to negative three would be negative 3.01. And then we need three values to the left. So I'm going to use negative 3.001. It's usually safe to use three values. For these questions, there's no agreed upon amount, but three is usually the standard amount that you're gonna use. So now going in from the right side here, if I wanna get really, 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 really close to negative three from the right side, I might start off here with let's say negative 2.9. So I have negative 2.9. And if I wanna get even closer to negative three, I would use negative two point and then two nines. And then finally, if I wanna get really, really close to negative three, I would use negative 2.999 like this. Now, of course, theoretically, I could put 1,000 nines after the decimal, but this should be good enough. So let's go back to the y equals, and we're going to type in this function here. So we're going to have alpha y equals enter, and we're typing in, we have 1 minus cosine of 2x plus 6. So I'm typing in 2x and then plus 6 here, and I'm going to close the parentheses, and we go down to the denominator, and we're going to write in x plus 3 squared. Now just know for calculus, you want to be in radians and notice that I am in radian mode here, but if you're in degrees, you should definitely switch over to radians. So once I've got this typed in, now I'm going to go to the table. I'm going to press second graph. And if I want to clear out this stuff over here, I'm just going to press delete a whole bunch. So now I'm going to type in these six values. Now, one thing that's jumping out at me right away is that the y values are showing up equal to 2. But if we scroll up to them, notice that it's not exactly equal to 2 for these two values here. It's actually equal to we have this value here. And the reason why the calculator does this is because it can't fit that many 9s in this little space here. So after a certain point, it will just round. But if you want to know the exact value, just scroll up to the number specifically, and it'll tell you the exact value. So now let's use this table to estimate the limit. So x is approaching negative 3, and negative 3 would be between these two x values. So I'm just going to draw a line here like this. And if we approach from the left side here, as x gets closer to negative 3 from the left, the y values are getting closer to 2. Notice that in this case, I included a lot more decimals, and that's because I wanted to show the clear progression here that the y values are approaching 2. And if we look here on the right side, as x approaches negative 3 on the right side, as we move from right to left, notice that the y values are also getting closer to 2. So our estimate here for our limit is going to be equal to 2. Now, one more thing before we move on. If we look at a graph of this function here, and we focus in in the neighborhood of negative 3, and we look at what happens as x approaches negative 3 from the left side and the right side, we could see that we're heading up to the top of this hill here, and the top of the hill goes up to y equals 2. Now, one thing to be mindful of is that the function here is not defined at negative 3. The function is undefined here. So technically, there's a hole in the graph in this location. But remember, your function does not have to be defined at a location for you to have a limit there. Question four, our last question, we're going to use a table of values to estimate the value of the limit as x approaches 0 of this function here. So I'm thinking of the number line again, except this time we're in the neighborhood of 0. So I'm thinking of 0 on the number line. And we want to get as close to 0 as we can. 
and we're going to come in from the left side and the right side. So from the left side, we could have values like negative 0.1 and then negative 0.01, and then we'll have negative 0.001. And then from the right side, we would have 0.001. We would have 0.01 and 0.1. So let's go over to the y equals, and we have this function here. We have x plus 2, and then we're going to tack on. We have plus alpha y equals enter to pull up a blank fraction. And we have 1 over, and in the denominator, we're going to have 10 to the 25th power, and then we're multiplying this by x. So now the values that we need, we have these six values here. So I'm going to go over to the table. We're going to press second graph and type in these values. So now let's use this table of values to estimate the limit as x approaches 0. And notice that x equals 0 is between these two x values here. So first we're going to find the limit as x approaches 0 from the left side. So we're moving from here to here. And notice that the y values, if we're going this way, are approaching 2. And if we find the limit as x approaches 0 from the right side, notice that the y values are also getting closer to 2. So that tells us the limit as x approaches 0 of this function here is equal to 2. <laughs> This is a very, 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 very dangerous bear trap. We have to be careful here and think. Just look at this. We'll do this by analysis first. If we look at this function, notice this part here, the 1 over 10 to the 25th times x. If I just focus in on the 1 over x part and I look at a sketch of this function, notice that we have a vertical asymptote at x equals 0. So when we approach 0 from the left side, we're heading down to minus infinity. And when we approach 0 from the right side, we're heading up to positive infinity. So when we look at this here, that would give us, if we plugged in 0, we would have 0 plus 2. So now I'm thinking we have 0 plus 2. And then when we approach from the right side, we're going up to infinity. So 2 plus infinity would send us to infinity. But when we approach from the left side, we would have 0 plus 2. And then the problem is this piece. When we approach from the left side, now we would be heading towards minus infinity. So 2 minus infinity would send us to minus infinity. So then why are we getting 2 here? And the problem with this is that 10 to the 25th power is a 1 with 25 zeros. So we picked small values of x that are close to 0, but we didn't get close enough. We have to do something that overpowers 10 to the 25th power. So if we go back to this table here, notice that I use 0 0.001 which is 10 to the negative third power. But let's say that I use 10 to the negative 10 power. Just think about this here. If I multiply 10 to the 25th by 10 to the negative 10, I would be left with 10 to the 15th power, which is still putting me in the neighborhood of two here. So this seems very, very frustrating. But once again, I have to pick something for x that will overpower 10 to the 25th. So why not pick something like 10 to the negative 30th? Because if I did 10 to the 25th times 10 to the negative 30th, now watch what happens. Notice that our y value blows up. And like I said before, the limit as x approaches 0 from the right side is going to head up to positive infinity. And now let me pick a small value for x close to 0, but now coming in from the left side. So let's say I did negative, and then I'm multiplying this by, let's say, 10 to the, and I'll use the negative 30th power again. So I'm going to use the negative 30th power again. Notice this time that we get something that is a really, really, really big number, but now it has a minus in front. So the limit as x approaches 0 from the left side is going to head down to minus infinity. So now let's summarize. The limit as x approaches 0 from the right side is diverging to infinity, and the limit as x approaches 0 from the left side is diverging to negative infinity. So since our left and right limits don't match, we're going to say the limit as x approaches 0 of our function does not exist. So the big idea for this video is just know that a table of values is only good for estimating limits. Okay, the most reliable method for finding limits is through analysis.